And we'll head over to court 18, where up, up next we have Liesl Hoover of the USA and Lisa Raymond taking on Maria Rakovic of New Zealand and Tamarine Tanisagan of Thailand. Your commentators when this match gets underway are Nick Mullins and Liz Smiley. Miss Raymond. First game. Good partnership. Two players who know their way around a doubles court as well as anyone else around at the moment. Uber and Raymond. Raymond's 37 now, 38 in August. Holder of a dozen Grand Slam doubles titles. Two of them here at Wimbledon. Although she's not won a Grand Slam title for a few years now. Roland Garros in 2006 Maria was her last. Serve. She probably thinks it's high time she ended that run. Marina Arakovic to serve. Love one down. First set. Fifteen love. So important to have a pretty good idea about what shot you think your partner is going to play and to be able to cover them. And at that point there, we saw good coverage from Raymond and Tuba supporting each other well. Nice lob over the top. Rakovic unable to get that. Well, it's unfortunate for Tana Sagan because she made the move to the middle. was just unable to put that volley away. Gave Lisa Raymond another chance of hitting. It's really important if you're going to go across in doubles to move forward and hit the ball down. And if you can hit it at the net person, they have less an opportunity of getting it back than if someone was on the baseline would be able to. A 23-year-old, born in Croatia, grew up wanting to be Monica Seles. Now represents New Zealand. Wanting to be her. Well. Want <laughs> to take her over. The body snatcher. <laughs> Gee, there's no. We don't think about Monica Aussie, very often Aussie. these days, but what a phenomenal impact she had on women's tennis and almost unbeatable in the early sort of 90s, 91, 92, and who knows what she would have gone on to do if uh, 
A terrible thing hadn't happened to her in Germany. It really was unfortunate. Great champion, though. Game. Ms. Tanisagan, one game all for set. Yes, it's funny how, um, that's funny, it's probably inevitable how eras overlap, but but Celes was almost coming off off the back of, of Martina, wasn't she, as Martina was starting certainly in the singles to to head down the other side Sarah of the hill. Monica Celes was, was coming in. She was almost unbeatable at Grand Slams. I don't have her record in front of me, but it, it really was. What she did for a three year period there was quite extraordinary. And, you know, the stabbing that happened to her in Germany, it, uh, it was by a Steffi Graf fan who wanted Steffi to become number one in the world again, you know, because Monica at that stage was number one. And uh, it really actually didn't do all that much physical damage, the stabbing. It was more psychological. That's on the line. And it really did transform the way that... Um, uh, security was at not just tour events but grand slams and you know no one ever thought that anything that bad could you know, happen to a tennis player while they were on the court and that certainly did change you've got her record don't you Nick <laughs> that's big hitting La Nine Grand Slams, four Australians, three French, two in New York, off the top of my head. <laughs> and within a small period of time, 91, 92, 93 at the Australian Open. Yep. Unbeatable there for three years. Yep. 91, 92 Roland Garros. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Replay the points. 91, 92 US Open. Yep. So out of a period of probably, oh, what, nine Grand Slams or... Yep. Unbeatable. The first person that really came along that could hurt you off both sides, forehand and backhand. In a four-year period, she won eight Grand Slams. Anyway, that's Mr. Monica Seles. Two games to one for sets. That's um, not what Huber and uh, Raymond would have expected early on. Certainly have to make Huber and Raymond the favourites out of these two. Third seeded Americans, as we've been saying already. There are no fewer than 114 doubles titles between them. Very, very early days, but they already know that Marina Arakovic and Tamarine Tanasagan are not just here to make up the numbers on court 18. Time. Serving duties now Tamarine passing to 34 year old from Thailand, Tamarine Tanasagan. Too good. Good disguise there from Raymond. That's the person to lob, is it? Tanner Sagan. Good disguise up and over. Tanner Sagan had committed to go forward, so the body weight was going forward. Tanner Sagan, five foot five. Shouldn't have to get a high percentage of first serves in today, Tana Sagan. So Rakovic can help her at the net. She's going to have a lot of pressure on her if she wants to serve and stay back. 
Huber and Raymond are go both going to be looking to come forward. Benefited from the fact in the end that she didn't hit it as well as she might have done. Came off the top of the frame, didn't it, from Rakovic? That's what made it so effective. Completely died when hit the grass court. Huber just not able to get there quickly enough. Great, great return from Arakovic. For New Zealand at the Beijing Olympics. Returned beautifully against somebody who used to represent South Africa. 15 all. Doubles with Cara Black, as Liz was saying, won a couple of Wimbledon titles together, 2005, 2007. One here with Aisugi Yama as well in 2004. Nice forehand volley there from Lisa Raymond. But halfway through that point, Arakovic was playing a really good point, looking to move forward. She came to the net, and Tana Sagan, what did she do? She retreated to the baseline. When a partner went to the net, Tana Sagan should have gone with her. As it was, she ended up at the baseline under pressure. Yep. That's you all. It's really important to have the same mentality as your partner. If your partner is keen to beat the net and playing aggressively, you have to have that same mentality. All the, the best doubles teams in the world very often think alike. So what is that? Is it a, a, a communication thing? Not watching? Not concentrating? Well, Tanner Sagan is uh, there was no reason for her to go back but I know if there's a team at the net and there's and they're together and there's a team down the other end one at the baseline and one at the net I know who's got a better chance of winning the point and that's the team that are both at the net yeah Mrs. Huber and Miss Raymond Miss Arakovic Miss Tamsagon lead three games to two first set Yeah, yeah. 
see how these two got to the quarterfinals. Gee, look at that yeah. road. One and two in the first round against Dokic and Jovanovski. Radvanska and Rodianova, one and love. And Kerber and McHale, one and love. Emphatic victories, really all of them. Two hours, 14 minutes to play three games of tennis. Not a lot of time, is it? No. Early indications that this one might be longer. They've had to um, come the slightly longer route. Second round needing three sets, but time. they have played otherwise very well also. Indications that this is a good matchup, despite the fact that the third seeds would be short odds coming into this. And it is Marina Arakovic to serve. Leading with a break in this first set, 3-2. Thank you at the end of the courts. Players are waiting. Thank you. Fifteen love. Good hands from Raymond. Now, the good doubles players, they just anticipate where the ball's going, and Lisa Raymond knew that ball was going down the middle from Tana Sagan and she held her ground. No backswing on the volley. Gives the pace of the Tana Sagan shot and hit into the open court. failing to make it through to the main draw of the singles had a decent run at Birmingham got to the quarterfinals the game is pretty well suited for grass good serve it's the ball flat now that error was a direct result of Lisa Raymond forcing Arakovic to think that she was going to cross at the net. So Arakovic sees her out of the corner of her eye and says, well, gee, I better make sure I go as wide as I can. And that's what drew the error. serve next. Ah! 
15 love. Remember Lisa Raymond playing playing a lot of singles when she when she first came here, but like former top ten player. Yeah. Great, great game for grass. Hustling at the net, she was uh, a lot quicker back in those days. Let's for service. Not that she's old or anything. No, no. What is she? She 37, Liz. When do you turn 37? Oh, isn't he nice? <laughs> Over the years, she had a very good run early on in her career here. She make it to the quarters. Oh, it's good. <laughs> she actually holds up a hand after she hits that <laughs> forehand as if an apology. I really didn't mean to hit this winning shot past you. But you see the ball just sort of stays low and Tanisagan hits it late. And that's why it goes where it did. Lisa Raymond quarter finalist in two thousand. No way she can hit that shot again. <laughs> That's what Lisa Raymond's saying. There's no way you can hit that shot. I hit a good serve. I've hit a good deep volley. And you've just absolutely just drilled it past me. 2000 seems like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? Does, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Two break points. My uh, poor, poor log. Raymond desperate to hold serve here. Broken the last time she served. Yeah. Ah, there was yes. great depth on that backhand from Raymond. Yes, you've got to think the odds are with you. I know we've seen Tanisagan hit, you know, two terrific forehands from centimetres inside the baseline, but you know, if Raymond plays that shot ten times, she's probably going to win it eight. So you just gotta figure that you know that's the way to play. First serve, first volley, get good net position. And the odds are with you. No advantage, Miss Stanisigan. Let's see if there's an apology here from Arakovic. Will there be? Hooper wasn't waiting for one. No. There's the break. Mr. Rakovic, Mr. Tanisigan, you both please. Mr. Rakovic, Mr. Tanisigan, lead four games to three. First set. The second time in this opening set, Lisa Raymond's serve has proved itself to be porous. A couple of good shots there by Tana Sagan. Tamarin Tana Sagan, her game is very well suited to grass. She's uh, low to the ground, so she doesn't have to bend that low. She's not all that tall. And she hits the ball very flat, so off both sides. So what happens is when it hits the grass, it doesn't sit up to be hit. It stays low. So if you're playing against that, it's much harder to get anything on the ball. You've got to get down lower yourself. And a lot of these girls that play on the tour, they have very extreme grips, and it's hard to get underneath a ball that doesn't sit up just around about hip height. Time. I ought to say um, hello to the other participant in the match today, Alison Lang from Great Britain, our umpire. Tana Sagan to serve with a break again. Four, three. Love 
Dean. Dino. Tana Sagan had um, had a little chug in the women's singles. She got through to the second round, but was beaten by Maria Kirilenko. A name you might recall, if only for the fact that she was then beaten by Serena Williams. Do well in the singles here as well, Liz Wanya. Tana Sagan. Sagan did, yes. I think it was back into. To look up my record record book there actually it was back in 2008 2008 i was wondering when it was tana sagan did well Gee, what a way to lose serve from Tana Sagan. First double fault. So they're doing a good job of breaking Raymond's serve. They've broken that twice, just can't seem to hang on to their own here. No one can. The last three service games have all been broken. The only one who's remained fireproof is this lady, Liesel Huber, serving now at four all in the first set. Gee, she serves that serve well. Such so effective on a grass court. She's not the fastest mover in the Bogney, world. Your voices are carrying to court. Thank you. The umpire just giving the fans here on the balcony. Court 18 is surrounded on three sides, and they're the people that are being a little bit too noisy for Alison Lang. Love. Yes, Liesl Huber's not the fastest mover in the world, so in her, for her to hold serve, she has to use all the serves she's got and really vary it. And this one to the first court, she serves very well. And Lisa Raymond then can help her out at the net. 
Yeah, she chooses her partner as well, Cara Black and now Lisa Raymond, two little scamperers. So it's very important to choose a good partner. It's halfway to a good doubles team, really. They're still looking for their first title together this year. They were beaten in the semi-finals of Roland Garros by Mertzer and Vesnina. Got to the final at Eastbourne as well. Still no silverware. Again, Mrs. Hoover, Miss Raymond. Steadied their ship a little bit and they Hoover, move ahead. Raymond lead five games to four. First set. Yeah, sometimes when a partnership is... Uh, in its infancy, it can struggle a little bit, and other times there's just an instant chemistry. I covered today uh, Mazicki and Stozer, and this is the only the second time they played. They won in Stuttgart, and they won the event, and that was the first event they'd played. And you know, sometimes that happens. You just have an instant rapport, and you instantly do well. And I have to say, it's nice to see Mazicki still playing in the doubles. You know, it was common 10, 15 years ago for the top singles players in the world to continue on and play doubles. And, you know, we don't see it quite as much anymore. Even someone like Sam Stoza, who has won major championships in doubles, and, you know, she went all of pretty much 2010, didn't play doubles and just played singles. And it's good to see her back playing doubles again because I think it enhances your singles game. Well, and particularly if you look at someone like Caroline Wozniacki, who, who, you know, who really could do with, with developing a little more to her game and... and learning how to come to the net and play those kinds of volleys. Absolutely. You play all sorts of points and, and, uh, and strategies on a doubles court that you don't necessarily have to play on a singles court, and it would certainly help Caroline Wozniacki. She would be a perfect candidate to play doubles. Marina Arakovic to stay in this first set. And just getting back to that doubles point, I think when, when players are young, you know, you need to play doubles and then there's no reason to stop playing doubles because particularly when you come to a grass court where you have to play lots of different angles you have to look to come forward it would only enhance the top singles players game if they played more doubles 30 love why is that not necessarily the case for the men, though? Federer's never really struggled to find angles, and he's not played much doubles, has he? Well, Federer's just a bit of a freak, really. You know, I, I think he will go down as, uh, obviously, one of the greatest, if not the greatest. Is, um, I don't think you can compare eras, but he's certainly up in the top two or three. Murray? No, he's got a, he's got a ways to get there. Oh, no, I wasn't putting him alongside Federer, but just in terms of the use of the angles and mm -hmm. the court crowd. Yeah, it's good play. Yeah, Andy already has that... 13, um, 15. Oh, that court awareness, if you like, of angles. and But certainly on the woman, women's side, because the girls hit both flat and hard from both sides, they don't take advantage of their, of their big ground strokes. And it's not because... They can't. It's just because they never do. And they've never been shown and they don't have the confidence to incorporate that into their game. And it's highlighted dramatically here at Wimbledon. That's uh, your... Would like that one back again. It's just a sitter, really, for Tanner Sagan. Just got a little bit awkward. Yeah, it was one of the features um, in some of the quarterfinals yesterday that, that for a number of the players walloping it on the baseline plan b was just to try and wallop it harder correct and you do need to have a plan b because plan a doesn't always work does it mm, to bring up set point Irakovic lost her last service game. 
she loses this one, there'll be a set down. That's a good move by Tana Sagan. You can just feel Huber wanting to come to the net. Sagan just nip that in the bud. Huber, coached by her husband Tony. And it was largely through her work that they drew up a second set point. Oh. Yes. It served right on the line. Of course, court 18 doesn't have a... Well, you can just see Liesl Huber there pointing out to Alison Lang where she thought the ball landed, but there's no um, challenge system here on court 18. Have to rely on good old-fashioned linesmen. picked on Tana Sagan a little bit, haven't they? Whenever they get a chance, it's the right thing to do, of course. She's only five foot four or five or whatever she is, but good racket work at the net. There goes the lob. Tammy just not able to get the racket on it. For those of you um, wondering, Hawkeye only goes to work on centre one, two and three these days. Third set point. Oh. It's taken. Game the first set, Mrs. Huber and Miss Raymond. Six games to four. Well, as soon as she missed that first serve, Rakovic was all, in all sorts of trouble. Huber hitting and coming to the net. And they're formidable when they're at the net, this duo here. Lisa Raymond really having some words to say there. Good communication. Normally a partnership does have a captain. I'm not too sure who the captain would be out of these two. They both like to uh, say their piece. It's like Lisa Raymond. To a beautiful backdrop. Statistics. Gee, neither of them doing too well in the second serve department. Look at that, 18%. Arakovic and Tana Sagan on their second serves. And Huber and Raymond, that's why we've had so many breaks of serve. First serves in, 70% for Huber and Raymond. And as you would expect in a 6-4 set, just a couple of points in it. Is, I, said, I assume that's lavender. I was going to ask kind of you looks that. Like lavender, it's it? to serve. Well, it's yeah. purple. Yeah. But there's lots of flowers that are purple. Loving. There has been a weakness in the game of the third seeded Americans. It's been the serve of this lady. Of Lisa Raymond. Oh! 
I thought you'd popped out to smell the lavender there, just to check. You've actually gone to turn the air conditioning off, which is set at Arctic proportions. Oh, oh the beautiful yes. touch from Raymond. And she's reasonably deep in the court as well to play a shot like that. Look at that. Gets in behind the ball down low. Good knee bend. Nice touch. Oh, got lucky. 15-13. Once again, Raymond serve, proving to be a little bit fragile. Well, she doesn't have a huge serve, Lisa Raymond. She has to rely on placement more than pace. It wasn't slow, it was 97 miles an hour, but they just seemed to be reading it. Two break points right at the start of this second set. Is she a little bit surprised that Lisa Raymond is serving here? I would have thought that Liesl Huber would have started out serving in this second set. Oh, there's the break. Mr. Rakovic, Ms. Tennis again. first game, second set. Raymond lost her serve throughout that last set, didn't she? And I know Huber lost her serve once, I think. Um, no. no, 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 no. Maybe she, she didn't lose she her serve at all. So out, yeah. there's absolutely no doubt that Liesl Huber should have started serving first. Which is what this team has done. Arakovic, who has got the better serve, serving first. Now, nah, too much space, wasn't there? Tana Sagan leaving just a tad early. Plus, there's no way you can cross on a ball that is wide like that. You have to hold your ground. Too easy for the returner to hit that one up the line. That's big serve. Tana Sagan finally gets one that she's not struggling for overhead. Good move. 40-30. Well, I was surprised there that Arakovic didn't come into the net. Once she got the lob, she planted her feet on the baseline and stayed there. And it was up to Tana Sagan to look for the one in the middle.
game, Ms. Rakovic, Ms. Tanisugan. Ms. Rakovic, Ms. Tanisugan lead two games to love, second set. Gee, you've got to be looking for that serve at some point in that first court. That's her favourite serve, Hoobers. We're going to see some eye formation here. Lisa Raymond will crouch down low and Liesl Hoover will serve this up the middle. Yeah, not the place to hit it, was it, Tammy? She knows that you have a choice between hitting to someone that's at the net and someone that's at the baseline. You really should go to the person at the baseline and then follow it to the net yourself. But a good volley from Raymond there. Tell us after this point why you would go for the eye formation and where you use it. That's a big hit, isn't it? Yes, the reason you do eye formation is if someone is really returning very well cross-court and no matter where you serve, they seem to be picking your serve or they're just making life difficult for you, it's just to make them play a different shot. And we're going to see it again here, eye formation. And the reason she has to serve up the middle, because if Huber served wide, then the whole alley is open. Well, it wouldn't be the place that I would serve, but Huber going back to normal formation here. And because Tanis Agan returns so flat and low, it's not that it's dipping, it's just that it's so flat and it's hard to come in and hit that first volley. And Lisa Raymond has certainly found it tough on her serve. Huber not necessarily serve volleying on every first serve. 40-30. Let's see if they'll go for eye formation again. I would think that they probably would. And I would think that this one would go down the middle, the serve. Okay, Mrs. Huber, Ms. Raymond. Ms. Rakovic, Ms. Tanisagon lead two games to one, second set. First set, Mrs. Huber, Ms. Raymond. The third seed of the Americans on the board for the first time in this second set. Talking about the record of, of Lisa Raymond, not just in the doubles, but also in the singles. Liesl Huber, outstanding record here since 2004. Three times a finalist, twice a winner. Beaten semi-finalist in the last three years with Cara Black and then Bethany Matic Sands. Yes, has done well and, and chosen her opponents well. And uh, you know, Liesl Huber has played doubles exclusively now for or as long as I can remember. Um, her agility and mobility around the court is not that great. But look, to her credit, she picks partners Hello. that do well what she doesn't do well. And she's got a good flat serve, so that's helpful on the grass. He certainly adds the power. Love 15. Arakovic had read it well. Didn't execute it quite as well, sadly, for her.
Love to see. Hopeful signs of a break back. Well played from Huber there. She's got quick hands when she gets to the net. So the return of serve was good. It had good depth. And she was looking to be aggressive immediately. Well, that serve was only 87 miles an hour, and just really catching Lisa Raymond by surprise. The oldies don't like the, the, uh, that showing up on the court when they come out because you know, some of us have trouble getting to 87 miles an hour. <laughs> Even when we push you downhill. Oh, that's harsh. <laughs> My son, who's here with me, has been spending a lot of time down at the interactive zone, which is this great area they have all the way down back near Court 12. And he's trying to get to 70 miles an hour on his serve, and he came home last night and said, Mum, I've got a really sore shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> We pluck these numbers out of the air, don't we? 148 miles an hour. Is that the new world record? It's just frightening. Oh, 30, 40. that was the perfect plan. All gone wrong. Good serve. Rakovic got the ball she wanted, and that was a shocker. Didn't move too early, didn't move too late, moved perfectly. Just didn't hit down once she got there. And it's um, an error that brings up a break back point. Yes. That ball keep low. The fact that we're 500 metres above the court. <laughs> she really seemed to have to dig that out, please, or Huber. Well, Tennis Agan, every ball she hits stays pretty low. Not much topspin happening there. Doubles play. Such a difficult player to play against, Lisa Raymond. Finding the depth on the shot that she found then. Well, she's always on the attack. She's always putting pressure on her opponent, either to come up with a passing shot or something a little bit special. the break back. Two games all, second set. That lady there, her name is Pam Whitecross, former tour player. She's an Australian and she is one of the Grand Slam supervisors here at Wimbledon. There's a, a team of them that uh, go around the court and very often if a trainer is called to the court or someone gets a warning the Grand Slam supervisor will appear at the side of the court. Not that that's happened here, but they just like to they go around to all the courts just to make sure that everything is going smoothly. Fifteen, love. She's busy texting at the moment. I oh, see she's got a little walkie-talkie in her hand, so the Grand Slam supervisors, they know what's going on. She's playing Angry Birds. <laughs> Honestly, she is. She looks like she's working hard, but she's playing Angry Birds. <laughs> Betty Love. Oh, 
Do you love? Correction. And the significance of that is it's the first time Lisa Raymond has managed to hang on to her serve. And that lady there is Gigi Fernandez, a great doubles player and mixed doubles player, multiple Grand Slam winner. Who is also Able. playing Angry Birds. No, she's not playing or Angry playing Birds. Was... She uh, played a lot with Lisa Raymond, as a matter of fact, in days gone by and is here playing the... Uh, Jurassic doubles, I mean the uh, invitational doubles. <laughs> with uh, She's playing here with Natasha Zvareva, who they won here a few times, I think. I don't know, that's the only bad thing about covering the oldies doubles, if you have to go out and play that, is that the record, I mean, you've got these great champions, you've got Novotna and Navratilova and Time. Hingis is back playing with Lindsay Davenport, and of course you have to remember you know, some of them you played against, and other ones you think, oh, gee, I know they won you know, nine times here, the singles, like Martina, but when you actually troll through all the other <laughs> records that they own, it's uh, really quite amazing. It, it's great that the All England Club invite everyone back, and I know everyone has a good time, and the crowd seems to love it as well. Do they do that at the other slams? Uh, in a limited type of way, yes. No ladies at the Australian Open, I'm sad to say. Love Once again, Huber and Raymond, once they set up camp at the net, they are hard to get by. You're not going to get through them because they both have such great volleys, so you either have to go over the top or try and create the angle so you can come in against them. sunshine of the day so far long may the showers that we've been warned of stay away Not quite as hot or as humid as it has been over the last couple of days temperatures 23 24 degrees and a breeze beautiful to play and to watch 30 15 I shouldn't really call it the oldies double, should I? When you have someone like Martina Hingis, who was probably only about 30. Well, Lindsay's how old's Lindsay, for goodness sake? She's Young. Yeah. So I'll have to think of another name. Maybe I should call it what it is, the ladies' invitational doubles. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Ravich, my sons are done. New balls, please. Back on serve here. Games all, second set. Oh, I need to come up with another name. Game for those who used to play seriously but <laughs> don't play quite as seriously now. Who can't quite get to the ball quite no. as well. That's a long name, though. I'm sure yeah. we can condense that. But to suggest they still don't play almost as seriously would confirm that you didn't see Tracy Austin's face yesterday evening when she came off court having played with Cathy Rinaldi and come out second best. She wasn't best pleased, <laughs> old Trace. Well, some things don't go away. That competitive spirit. Liesl Huber serving here with new balls, three all in the second set. Oh. 
15 love. She loves. Talking of those invitational doubles, um, Navratilova and Novotna are the holders. I saw that they won in straight sets, um, actually a little earlier on this court, against Helena Sokova and Andrea Temeshvari. They were down set points in the first set, though, so they didn't have it all their own way. Good calling, though, there. You see the teamwork there. As soon as that ball went up, Lisa Raymond said, on the first one, it was you, and then the second one, it was me. So important in doubles. Doing enough to stay ahead, but um, yeah, dominating this ladies' quarterfinal. Yes, and all the ladies' doubles matches today, they haven't been quarterfinals, have they? So this little section is around ahead of the um, the other section of this top section of the ladies' doubles, if you like. The Siki and Stoza, they, they now go on and play Petrova and Roddy and Over. And that match won't be played today. So, you know, that can impact when you have people that are still in singles, as Sabine Lazicki is. Uh, it can impact on other events at the championships. Time. There is um, a noticeable spring in their step, though. Huber and Raymond bouncing out like two little girls on the way to a birthday party. Wanting to miss out on the cake. Attention for the time being, though, is on Tamarine Tanasagan and the tie and her service game. She lost her last service game, so she'd like to make amends here, Tanasagan. Fifteen love. Good way to start. This used to happen in the old days. I can't remember. So much Through communication. McMillan and Bob Hewitt having these little conference calls in between every point. No. And I never recall high fiving any of my partners. Don't start me on high fiving. Particularly when they've served a double fault, I can guarantee you that I wouldn't have high fived no. them. Well, you might have fived them, but it. Yeah.
speaking of. There was high a high five. five. Yes, yeah, so it's a little bit too much for my liking, but I'm a little bit from the old school, I guess. You just get on and play. And if you know your partner reasonably well, you've got a pretty good idea what they're thinking and where they're going to serve and what you should be doing after that serve. Not enough white flat caps either. A white flat cappage. In a doubles what match. is that? White flat caps. What is a white Bob. flat cap? It's a cap that's flat and white, like oh, Bob like, Hewitt's was. Uh, I know we speak a different language, Liz, but. Or did Fru used to wear that? No, that was Bob. Was it? Yeah, that was quite. Uh, I know what you mean now. Oh, it took a funny bounce, didn't it, for Tanner Sagan? It sort of hit that 14, uh, alley line and takes... Look at it. She almost needed another step to get there, Tanner Sagan. I can't think of anybody else who used to wear a white flat now, you know. cap. Well, it was Fru. Fru's, Fru's still here. Still doing his stuff. It may well have been Fru. In the meantime, while we're blathering on about players from the 70s, set. that's an important hold from Tamarine Tanasagan. The 70s were good. They were great. Borg, how great was he? It's all right. <laughs> Which year was he all right in? For all, Raven to serve. Let's replay the points. Now, there was a, another ball on the court, and that's the reason for the let, and Alison Lang, the umpire, is just explaining that. And saying she saw it. But it doesn't matter if the players don't see it. If the umpire sees it, then she calls a let immediately. Big roar from number one court, which you might have picked up on our effects mics. Um, a roar sprinkled with Serbian because Novak Djokovic has just gone through in four sets against your man, Liz Bernard Tomic. Gee, what a great tournament he's had. One for the future, without doubt. Came through qualifying, almost lost in the first round of qualifying, as a matter of fact. 6 4 in the third, a couple of points away from defeat. Isn't that amazing how that can happen? He come through qualifying in the second round. He was down two sets to love and a break to Andreev out on court number three. And he plays against Soderling, who possibly wasn't at his best. Goes on and plays against Melise. Beats him in three straight sets. Wonderful tournament for Bernard. 30-15. Not too many of those from Lisa Raymond today. Four from her team. Just one from the opponent. Oh. Wondering about Songa and Federer, by the way. It's gone to a fifth set. Wow. And Songa has just broken Federer at the start of it. Ah, oh, too early, Ray. Oh. Too early from Liesl Hoover. She had no business going anywhere. Tanner Sagan, this is off the backhand side. Let's have a look at this. Not too sure where Liesl Hoover was going. Acre and a half to hit into down the line. 40-30. Gee, I thought that was a long way out. Mm, looked it, didn't it? No joy, though. This will not be changed unless the umpire does it immediately. They've got no intention of overruling a linesman. Game point for Raymond. Ah! 
Martin Gay, Mrs. Hoover, Miss Raymond. Mrs. Hoover, Miss Raymond lead five games to four, second set, and by one set to love. This is exactly the situation that Irakovic and Tanisagan found themselves in at the end of the first set. 5 4 down. Irakovic coming out to try and hold on to her serve, which he couldn't. Lost the set. Very shortly, Irakovic will be coming out to try and hold on to her serve for a second time. Great court, this court 18, oh, isn't it? It will, it will setting, forever yeah. be known for that wonderful match that was played last year between John Isner and uh, Mahu. 68-70. Yeah, there's a little plaque outside to um, remind to us it. Yeah. <laughs> when we walk by every day. It's amazing the number of people who go by and take photographs of the plaque as well. Even the plaque <laughs> has become famous. Anyway, big moment this. Because Marina... Arakovic, the Kiwi Croat, and Tamarine Tanasagan are battling to stay in this women's doubles quarter final. Gee, that's a good second serve. Right on the line, pulling Lisa Raymond well wide. It's good to get that first point under your belt when you're serving to uh, under pressure and serving to stay in a match. That's a bad miss. She wouldn't miss too many of those. Liesl Huber. She got the ball she wanted on the forehand side. It was an interesting selection, wasn't it? She really can't quite believe that she missed it. Partner was at the net. She was looking to come forward and she just overcooked it. Forty love. And very quickly, a game from which they thought they might steal a ticket to the semi-finals is rapidly passing them by. And again, another big second serve wide, that time the ace. Good hold there from Arakovic. Thank 
see love. Six games to five, second set, and by one set to love. You're the best doubles partnership you've ever seen. Male, female, mixed. What do you think? Um, a bit of an unfair question, but I'll put you on the spot. It was very hard to go past Martina and Nevertlova and Pam Shriver from my era. Um, oh, the Woodies. The Woodies. Phenomenal understanding of each other and the court uh, Mac and Peter Fleming yeah um, I guess you have to throw the Bryan brothers in there <coughs> it's a very different style of doubles that is played now um, you know I didn't grow up with huge serving and people playing very close to the net and slam dunking the volley. It's much more uh, mechanical, isn't it? Yes. It, there's less much, artistic. Much less of the angles and trying to create the opening and putting the ball into the open court. And it's very different now. Tanis again serving to stay in the match again. Fifteen love. Venus and Serena, they're a formidable combination, but they, they play more like two singles players on a double doubles court. used to tell you that it was never as good as it was in their day. Yes, you have to be a little bit careful. And you start to realise that you're <laughs> sounding like an old person. Why? Was I sounding old? No, you're not old, oh. but I was. I was. <laughs> Thirty, fifteen. There's no doubt that there was a certain style to doubles a long time ago that that style is no longer with us whether it's on a grass court or a hard court and it's a it's a thing to be missed Guys, there from Tanis Sagan. They were both coming at her, weren't they? Charging the net, and she just waited till the last minute up and over with Sir Raymond. Oh, it's in. 40, 30. It was a great return from Raymond initially. A good stretch from Huber. Rakovic had a play on that, but she uh, thought the ball was going to go long.
Let's second service. That's a good return. Yes. Just far enough away from Tanner Sagan to make things really awkward. She almost gets over there, Tanner Sagan. Here's the return. Huber is looking to hit that and come to the net. And just Tanner Sagan can't get there with the two hands on that backhand side. Balls out Five and it's match point. Mrs. Hoover. Needed every inch there, didn't she, Lisa Raymond? She knew the lob was going to come her way and did a good job of getting up there and just getting it over, which of course made it very awkward for Tanner Sagan. Had no pace on it, it was short in the court. Two inches away from the semi-finals. But two inches the wrong side of the line. Just couldn't get out of the way, could she, Hubert? The ball came straight at her and she just didn't have quite enough room to play the shot she wanted to play. Good. <laughs> Liesl doesn't like the call. We'll get another look at it here. It's good. There's no way that the umpire is going to overrule on the far line, though. Only in extreme cases. Yep, that's good. Delayed the shot as well, didn't she? Waiting for it. saved a match point and it means that they go into this tie break buoyed as we can see by what they've just done they're still in this quarter final and Huber and Raymond have got to reinvigorate themselves and it is Lisa Raymond who will serve first in the tie break let's first service Last mini break right at the start. Now it's Arakovic to serve. Mr. 
The umpire is still trying to get uh, the people to be quiet on the balcony that overlooks court 18. It's very difficult because it's not just those who are leaning over the balcony watching the match, but there's a big queue just behind them waiting for return tickets on the show court, so aren't necessarily engrossed in this match and just having their own little chats while they wait in the sunshine for tickets that might come up. Two mini breaks, and it looks as if we're heading for a third and deciding set. back from here isn't it in this tie break it was tamarine tanis and having two serves which if she wins both will secure the set right in the corner for Tana Sagan. Staying low once again. It's hard to get a hit at that. Makes it very awkward. Former quarter finalist here. In singles back in 2008. Tana Sagan. Goes away around a grass court. Stops the rot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Still be a good one to win from here. But they're up and running. Lisa Raymond now serving with just the five set points to save. Game in second set, Lisa Rakovich. And the third seed of the Americans are being taken into a third set tiebreak. over a silver birch how poetic gee that number has improved second serve points one remember Rakovic and Tana Sagan they were down at less than 20 percent in the first set that's a terrific number 71 percent had a few chances haven't they Huber and Raymond and Rakovic and Tana Sagan just had the one break opportunity and took it. Still a lovely day. Rolly's being used to keep the sun off you today rather than the storms. Yes, you don't go anywhere without a brolly, do you? It's multi purpose. Multi purpose. I've got two in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> 
can't, certainly can't complain about weather like this. Great court. It, it's surrounded by the broadcast centre. Oh, what happened to that? The tennis is pretty good. You just don't know what he's missing. I hope he knows her. Well, maybe we should get off that. Oh, maybe. Dear, steady, <laughs> steady. Yeah, this uh, court number 18 oh, is surrounded oh, oh. Shush, on three sides by the broadcast centre. And uh, he's, oh, he's a cheeky little thing, isn't he? And then up on the top, we have a great rooftop garden that uh, the media of the world have cameras set up on the rooftop garden. And uh, they go back to all sorts of places like uh, Australia, where, of course, it's the middle of the night. There it is. And a little bar back there for tea and coffee and scones, strawberries and cream. And St Mary's course, Church in the background yeah. as well, up on up on Wimbledon Hill. And that's Sue. You see that little those smoke glass windows beneath what we think is like that's Sue's palace. That's where Sue Barker lives. We've got a dingy little office around the corner <laughs> where we prepare our magic. I love this court. It's fabulous. You've got a great view of centre in the far distance. The church and the trees up on the hill. Time. It's a great place to watch. Really have done a remarkable facilities with the grounds and the whole club Final six. since I started coming here back in uh, 1980. It was my first year at the championships in the juniors. At the start of the third and deciding sets in this ladies doubles quarterfinals match. Love. Might have lost the ball. The kind of situation where we would spend the next half an hour at the end of the game looking for it. It's in that bush, I think. It's not. I've looked there. 15 all. Look harder. Tammy can't believe she missed that volley. Always feel so bad when you're the net person and your partner has put in a good serve and you have a sitter at the net and you miss it. Well, that'll make up for it a bit. She packs a punch, Tana Cigar, doesn't she? She's. She does. She's not a battleship, but she um, she's a decent little frigate. We're going there. Forty fifteen. Rakovic, just 23, by some distance the youngest on court. And she has game. played and continues to play very well. She's the junior, isn't she, Rakovic? Back into the world's top 100. A couple of years ago, she um, dallied with the top 50 as well. At around the same time. She's currently ranked 144th, though, so she has dropped off significantly. But we've seen signs of how she got towards the top 50 this afternoon. Hubert to serve, love one. 15 love.
Oh, wrong way, Tana Sagan. She was looking to come in. And she shouldn't have hit it to Lisa Raymond. She should have hit it back to Liesl Huber. That would have given her more time to get good net position. Shaking her head. She knows she hit the wrong shot there. Beautiful off return there from Arakovic. Just took the pace off, didn't hit it hard. That was the beauty of that shot. Swung through just a little bit slower and Liesl Huber unable to get to there off the serve. Oh, good hitting from Arakovic. Big forehand there doing the right thing. Straight up the middle when in doubt. square things up here on court 18 the enormous cheer you can probably hear coming from centre court signals the story of the championship so far because Roger Federer has gone Joe Wilfred Songa from two sets down has knocked out Federer and he is dancing his dance of delight on centre court the biggest day of his life Oh, that's wonderful for him. When it's 6 4 in the final set. Love 15. So, not this year will Roger Federer be equaling Pete Sampras's record of seven singles titles. Beginning to wonder if ever. Quarter finalist defeated last year. Quarter finalist this year. What Going a through story. a bit of a dry what spell, a really, story. isn't he, Roger? Yeah. Not just here at Wimbledon, but Grand Slams in general. Oh, that's a great lob. 50-0. Liesl Huber, see how she hustles here as soon as she knows that Lisa Raymond is moving forward and couldn't make the adjustment that was always going to be a tough ball for Huber to run down. And there's... Tammy's response. Clench fist. Thirty fifteen. What was the last time we had a Wimbledon like this where so many big names, not necessarily the top seeds because the Williams sisters weren't up there, were they? But where so many big names have have gone before the semi finals. It's been it's been the theme of these championships. Federer, the latest to head home. Yeah. Last second service. As a ranker, is the highest lady seed in, isn't she? At number four in the world, one, two, and three all gone. Well. Wozniacki, the number one seed. Forty fifteen. And of course, yet to win her first major, Caroline Wozniacki. 
never really came into uh, the thinking when people were talking about who was going to win here. Certainly Venus and Serena Williams did. Both lost on the same day last week. Kim Clijsters not here through injury. up the other uh, men's side of things it will be um, Joe Wilfred Songa against Novak Djokovic in one semi-final and then Rafael Nadal or Marty Fish who've just started their quarter to our left on court one against perhaps Andy Murray don't want to be on that list do you of uh, one of the best players never to have won a major Kleisters was on there for a while Moresmo Murray's on that list well and truly advantage Miss Anasagan so Raymond knows that opportunities are coming along few and far between at the moment, and that was one. Two games to one, final set. Eventually coming through it, or to um, point out for those who um, have been on another planet, by the way, that Feliciano Lopez might also have a say in events over the next couple of days. He and Murray due up next on centre court. Just can't imagine the pressure that uh, Andy Murray plays under here at Wimbledon you know Tim Henman had it for so long and it's been such a dry spell for British tennis all the way back to uh, Fred Perry was it 34 35 and 36 Fred won Jamie Murray won the mixed doubles here 2007 sorry that doesn't count I mean it's, it's nice for say. Jamie Murray easy for you to say Liz it doesn't count we're talking about the big kahuna <laughs> <laughs> with onions on top <laughs> I've been uh, Im impressed in particular with, with, with Andy Murray's attitude this fortnight, though. He seems much less uptight than in previous years, much more relaxed, and that can only help him. Gee, I think He's he gives his box a bit Thank of a you. serve. I, I, I watched him the other day, and uh, when the going got tight, I, I wouldn't like to be sitting in that box where his mother and his girlfriend and coaches sit. Oh, what about that return from Arakovic? Again, it's the service of Lisa Raymond that is looking vulnerable. And, you know, she was first to serve on their team, the second, you know, the first service game they had of the second set, and I really do think that started out the set badly for them. And I think that was a, a tactical error. Uh, up until that point, Liesl Huber, and she was doing well on serve, and even though it meant changing ends or the end that you serve from, you always should start with your best server serving first, and uh, that didn't start them off on a good footing. They lost that opening game and then went down to love. Particularly after you've won the first set, you really want to just press home that advantage. 13 30. Thank you. 
Thank you. Gee, there's a miss from Tanner Sagan, 15.30. Really good players know exactly what to do when it gets tight. Raymond putting in a good first serve. Legs for service. Game. This is over, Miss Raymond. Two games all, final sets. and had their opportunity there at Love 30. Still, we go on. What can separate them? Next up on the pitching mound, Marina Arakovic. Does that mean Raymond is better up? <laughs> Good evening, love. Do they have a short stop in baseball? Because Tamas Agan just <laughs> played the role there, didn't oh. she? <laughs> I'm going to tell her you said that. <laughs> First rule of commentary, never say anything about anyone on court that you wouldn't say to their face. Oh, gee, I didn't know that rule. That's a good move, isn't it? 30, 15. Tennis Garn waited right until the correct moment here. So Raymond has just made contact with the ball. If you go too early, then she'll see that of the corner of her eye. Tennis Garn sees the racket take back from Raymond, that it's going to be a slice backhand. Well done. That's a great point. The timing of the run to coincide with the connection of the ball when it's too late. Well, if it's too early, you leave the line open, and it's too late, you don't get to the ball. Yeah, really interesting. That's you all. Lisa, I heard Lisa Raymond there say, well, so I have to lob. Well, let's just see if there's a good first serve here. Lisa Huber is hovering near the baseline, or she's going in a little bit now, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is a lob. Certainly not if a second serve it won't be. Wait, please. Gee, that's not what, what not to do. Second serve. Raymond got the shot she wanted, the forehand. Well, 
Mizrakovic was rather brought back into that point, but she certainly made the most of the second opportunity. Mizrakovic, Ms. Hanasadan, lead three games to two final sets. Rakovic did a good job in that last point. She was under pressure. She was on the baseline and hitting big forehands. Huber and Raymond had good net position. It's very hard to know where this one's going, Liz. It's, it is. Um, that is true. It's tantalizingly balanced, isn't it? You could make cases for either of them at the moment. Well, everyone's had their moments. There's been plenty of breaks of serve. And certainly Arakovic and Tana Sagan played an excellent tiebreak, winning that seven points to one. Don't think it's going to rival the longest match out here on court 18, though. Don't speak too soon, Liz. Don't, Don't get speak too, too comfortable soon. over there, Nick. Liesel Huber, 2-3. The other thing the eye formation does for Huber and Raymond is it actually opens up the forehand side of Liesl Huber. So rather than having to play backhands cross court, Liesl Huber can play forehands up the line, which is the shot that she would prefer to hit. Again, Mrs. Huber, Miss Raymond. Games all final sets. New tennis racket for Liesel Huber. Tanner Sagan, one set all, three games all in the decider.
Ladies and gentlemen on the balcony, please be quiet. Your voices are carrying to court. Thank you. I think that's a losing battle for Alison Lane today, trying to keep the crowds on the balcony quiet. It's a bit of a thoroughfare going through there. Remember the old walkway um, that used to run along the top of the old number one court when it was bolted on to centre? Yes. That always used to cause problems as well. Because well, that didn't used it? to access centre court, didn't mm. it, that walkway? Yeah. Not necessarily watching the match, but making your way through. And that old number one court was a really unusual court because you had spectators below you. Felt like you were on a stage when you played on it. Uh, that's a bad shot from Lisa Raymond. Second serve. Tanis Agarn had hit a double fault on that side, the previous shot, and that was only 76 miles an hour. She'd like to have that one back. Oh, not impressed. No, with that well service the, call. the line judge was short, but Huber much less so. Come back from 40-15 to put some pressure on the serve of a player who's already lost her serve twice in this match. from Lisa Raymond to get to that ball and no find the angle. This again. next one here, this is the let cord. Right there. Raymond does a good job and that's an even better shot. Look at that. Rakovic splitting the middle. Sets. And if the top, or rather the uh, the third seeds, do go on to lose this match, they might reflect on that moment. Not entirely sure there was anything more than Lisa Raymond could have done with her lovely little clip shot across the net. It's all about the quality of Irakovic and what then followed, but at that point they must have thought they were bringing up a break point. However, very shortly afterwards they find themselves a game behind once again. Fine. We've been 
talking on match about. Of all the serves, it's the Raymond serve that's been least convincing. She needs it now. You can hear Lisa Raymond encouraging Liesel Hoomer, let's go. But they're not finding it easy. The others aren't letting them go. Let's her service. That's a solid point from Raymond. Excellent first volley. Backhand volley there, inside out. Good touch on here, and she closes in. Technically, just a terrific backhand volley Lisa Raymond has. 40-15. as good as she's served all match and as confidently as she's played during her service game. Marina Arakovic at four all in the third set. It's a bit like Russian roulette this, doesn't it? Be the one to crack first. Fifteen love. Yeah, it's always a bit of cat and mouse. Good doubles, you know, whether to go down the line and keep the net person honest, whether continue to go back cross court. Are you going to go for a big first serve or hit a good first serve and get into the net quickly? All those decisions that need to be made when it gets tight. Raymond did a lot of hard work there, and Hoover was the one that finished it off. 30-15. Big point right here.
potentially costly one. Set. And now, of course, it starts to get interesting because we're starting to enter the realms of the finish line being in sight. Well, it's always just a little bit more pressure on the team serving second and when it gets to this stage of a match. Match points can come into play and just the fun that finality of it all really isn't there what well, to be said that um that i think liesel huber has been the best of the four servers certainly the statistics would back that up she's lost just nine points on her own service game rarely been in trouble on it where the noise is coming from well yeah and you talked about the queue behind there too it's amazing yeah uh, you know those people are going to queue there for a long time and look at all the tennis they miss while they're queuing anyway could have a possibility to get into a show court so i guess it's worth it liesel huber to serve to stay in the match Continuing with the eye formation. I used to like it when people played eye formation on me because it meant that I was really bothering them on the return of serve and they, they had to do something different because of what I had done. Just keep your eye on Lisa Raymond. She moves as soon as she hears the noise of the ball on the racket, by which point the ball's already beyond her. She didn't move at all then. <laughs> but I promise you that's what she's doing. Speed of sound. You don't have that, do you, when some of the girls, because they make really loud noises when they serve and when they hit the ball. For sea love. I think the loudest of them all is uh, still left in the draw. Actually, two of them. Azarenka and Sharapova. Azarenka. after doing the um, the Azarenka quarterfinal last night and for the first 30 seconds all I got was her doing impressions of her was it a good impression it was a good impression yeah no it was very good she 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 varied the pace varied the pitch as Victoria does impressive and annoying in equal measure five all Tana Sagan to serve Up. 
15, love. Uh, she'll take it, but it certainly didn't come out of the Percy, middle of the racket, no. did it? And Raymond Both moved up in formation, but were comfortably bypassed. shadows of those up on the balcony. They're ten feet tall. We don't mind shadows. Shadows are a good thing. You know what that means. <laughs> We've got clouds. <laughs> um. <laughs> so we were talking about potential weaknesses in Lisa Raymond's serve. Certainly didn't see any in her previous game, she was very impressive. Needs to be equally so now with new balls serving to stay in the game. Excellent point from Lisa Raymond. Gee, that was good. Good first volley, or well, half volley. And then followed up. That was the depth that the half volley got. She covered the middle, Raymond, and then with the overhead, emphatic style. Well played. tiebreak in the final set so we go on for as long as it takes last three service games have all been one to love so we talked about the potential for one or two of them getting twitchy they've actually got stronger as we've neared the match's conclusion Arakovic now serving 15 love
15. It's the first time in 17 points that the team who aren't serving have won a point. Got a bit awkward there for Tana Sagan. She was going to hit a volley and then the ball didn't have enough pace on it. So she decided to let it bounce, but she got a bit caught. Tried to do a little bit too much with it once it got behind her. Again, Mr. Rakovic with Tana Sagan. Zeragovic, Miss Tennis is going to lead seven games to six, final set. It's a popular court. You get a great view from up there as well. Right behind the service line. That's our little potting shed there. Liz tending to her petunias at the moment. <laughs> on Liesel Huber. She now serving to stay in the match. How do we explain this newfound dominance on the serve, Liz? How can we do this? 22 of the last 23 points have been won by the server. You're expecting me to explain that to you. It's bizarre, isn't it? In, well, a, in a match where, you know, we've not necessarily had dominant serves so far. You certainly were getting a lot more opportunities on the serve, weren't we, before the last few games? And it doesn't look like stopping. It, Yeah, it just looks like it's going to continue, really, doesn't it? Yep, good close by Raymond. Love 15. Continuing my theme of completely irrelevant statistics, the first time in nine games the first point has been won by the receiver. And Lucy Stick Raymond, around. she was down Love 30. At 2 all, she was in trouble then, and since then... Pressure here for Tana Sagan. That came off a second serve. This 
small window of opportunity for Raymond and Huber. what she thinks about that all right it wasn't funny after the kiss actually if I was down the other end I wouldn't be laughing Again. She found the gap when there was none to be found up the middle, making Raymond just stretch awkwardly enough to miss it. Still not out of the woods yet here at 30 40. Those points Raymond and Hoover had terrific net position on and really was an opportunity there for Hoover to have a play on that last shot. That's what happens when it gets tight. You just wish the ball and hope that the ball will go out. That one well inside the baseline. That is a terrific hold from Tamarine Tanisagan there, down 15.40. At 15.40 point, she was on the baseline. She ended up ripping a forehand up the line when, once again, both Raymond and Huber were at the net. And then at 30.40 point was the one that Liesl Huber let go. So it was under extreme pressure there. Tanisagan came through with flying colours. Becoming a familiar tactic as well to have to try and break two players who are hogging the net, forcing them to try and hit the targets. Well, we've seen lots of lobbing, haven't we, from both sides? We've seen lots of lobbing over Tanis Agan in particular and over Lisa Raymond, the two shortest players on the court. Once again. So Raymond serving to stay in the match. Love 
Christine. Good Lisa Raymond there 13, saying to her partner, 15. great up. Meaning she got back and up to that overhead very well. She really does have a very solid overhead. Liesl Hoover doesn't miss too many of those. Just kissing the top of the net. Tennis Sagan's ball there. Huge point right here. 30 all. 7 8. Oh, and it brings up match point. The drive from Arakovic. 30 40. The opportunity now for the two of them to reach out and grab a place. The semi final. Remember, Huber and Raymond, they had one match point back in the second set. They'll have a second serve. Ah. Wrong place, Tennis again. Yes. Maybe she thought Huber was going to go, but really she's returned so well cross court. It's her bread and butter. She really should have gone back to there again. Advantage, Miss Raymond. Good hands from Liesl Huber. Conversation about where this first serve's going. That's oh, too good. Oh, that was beautiful. Oh, too bad, Miss Raymond. Serve and volley, and as good as it gets. Eight games all, final set. The match point that they had was all the way back in uh, at 6-5 in the second set on Tanner Sagan's serve. Huber and Raymond had won then. Seems like a long time ago now. I guess it was an hour ago. Let's go service. Arakovic in the sunshine, eight all. Fifteen love. To show how that point went south. As a matter of fact, for Raymond and Hubert. Hubert, Liesl, I don't know, maybe should have taken that ball in the air and hit it as an overhead rather than letting it bounce and gave the opportunity back to her opponent to get back into the point.
2015. Oh, it's a big hit. Big flat backhand from Arakovic. 40-15. Big hit in a match of big hits. Looking for somebody to do something a little bit different, perhaps. Take a risk, win the match. That's too good, that's in. Oh, that is beautiful. Curve through the sunshine and she picked a spot. Ms. Rakovic, Ms. Tanisagan lead nine games to eight, final set. Rakovic has done a good job when she's on the baseline and both Raymond and Huber are at the net. On this particular occasion, she holds it just for as long as possible. She sees that the opponents are well committed. You see how close to the net, in particular, Liesl Huber gets and just goes up and over. Brushing up the back of the ball, she's pretty happy with that lob. Yes, you just feel like your point is well made, Nick, about someone doing something just a little bit different to try and create the opportunity. You would have to say that it, that it is Huber and Raymond who are at least trying to vary the game a little bit. Arakovic and Tana Sagan are more likely to wait for the mistakes. Certainly Lisa Raymond. She was in trouble in her last service game, wasn't she? She was down a match point. Came through that. This is Huber. Lisa Raymond, she actually tried to get her racket out of the way here, but the ball had so much pace of shot on it that she just couldn't do it effectively and it hit it as she was trying to take it away. So that's why you heard the umpire called touch. Let first service. There'll be another conversation here going to do the same thing. You're going to play I formation. I'm going to serve it at the tee. Oh no. Change up. 15 all. Fifteen. Overall from the chair. 
called good by the lines person. That's a good hold from Liesl Huber. Solid as a rock as we see Tamarine Tanisagan. She needs a bathroom break. So off she goes. Of course, you can't speak to your coach at this particular juncture. That's why a lines person goes with you. It always seems like there's a bathroom close by, no matter what court you play on here at the All England Club. Needless to say, I think they'll probably take Tamarine into the broadcast centre. Nothing exciting happens in there. Been going two hours and 39 minutes. This ladies' doubles quarter final. The winner of this match will go on to play the winner of a match, the Siki and Stoza, and Petrova and Rodionova. And that won't be played today because they did play earlier doubles matches just to get to the quarterfinal, so they were a round behind. And Sabine Lazicki has just an important matter of semi final appearance in the singles to contend with. She's in the top section of the lady singles draw. Her most recent win against Marion Bartoli. 6-4, she beat Bartley yesterday. And she will play against Sharapova, who just crushed Sybil Kova, who had beaten the number one player in the world, Caroline Wozniacki, in a terrific match, 7-5 in the third. Wozniacki still looking for her first Grand Slam win. She's been completely dominant on WTA Tour. Wozniacki winning five times already this year, six times last year. But, of course, that question is always asked about majors. That, that's what all the spectators know about. They all know about the four grand slams. And at the end of your career, that's what you look at from a player's perspective too, how you've done in the majors. As we see Tamarine Tanisagan find her way back to court 18. So the contest continues. Tamarine Tanis are going to serve. Nine all in this third set. We're a match point down in the second set. They had their own match point earlier in this third. Ah, oh, that's a bad volley. 15 love. Trying to hit a drop shot there off the forehand volley, Liesl Huber. Does much better, Huber, when the ball comes at a good pace to it. Stands the ground well, uses her opponent's pace of shot very well. of it showing how to play the drop volley on the forehand side. Nice touch, soft hands.
Richie what Maker. Yes. Oh, no. Good hands to get the racket on the ball, though. Miss Tennis to go and lead ten games to nine. Final set. You got any plans for tonight, Liz? <laughs> None at this moment, <laughs> but soon I will. Saw Lisa Raymond holding her hand up there as if to apologise for that fantastic half volley she hit. Good hands. Forty love. Saved match point on her own serve in her previous service game. This is much more solid. Now the challenge for these four is to match the score between the Bryan brothers and Aspelin and Hanley, which ended a little earlier in the final set. The Bryan brothers won it 16-14. So another 11 games to go, and we'll have ourselves a little record. It was over five, wasn't it, in the men's? We only had to finish from the day before, so I'm not too sure how many games they played today, but certainly enough. I think it was about two all or three all in the fifth when they came out. Oh, 
Oh, they had to fight for it, didn't they? Tanner Sagan was the one that won, though. Rakovic called mine earlier, and then Tanner Sagan, you heard her call mine, mine, mine. Just in case the partner didn't hear it on the first two occasions. Oh, it's a good move. 40, 15. He's got some pace on that shot too, Tanis Gunn. Here's the move on this next ball. Perfectly timed. Hitting down. Well, such has been the dominance of the serves in this set so far that whenever the receivers get 30 points, we perk up a bit. <laughs> I think here we go. Ms. Tanisagan lead 11 games to 10, final set. Lisa Huber gave that um, a suspicious look. Didn't linger too long over her complaint. Yes, it's a bit of an adjustment, isn't it, for the players that play most of their matches on show courts and then have to come out to these. I'm not necessarily saying it's these four girls, but it's an adjustment for the umpire as well. Because keeping in mind, um, Alison Lang is a very experienced umpire and she would do a lot of matches on either centre one, two or three, which are the four courts here that have the challenge system. So for her not to have it would be an adjustment. I was going to say something exciting about Alison Lang and how I'd seen her on centre court, but I've just looked back through my notes and it wasn't centre court, so it's not exciting. <laughs> When does fatigue start to play its part? Liz, do you think we've been six minutes short of three hours on court now? It's a hot day. Not that hot. Oh, that's a well played shot. It was won by Tanis again, but it was set up by Arakovic. Excellent low return and then a nice backhand at the line by Tammy. Just a hint of an opportunity here at 15.30. Oh, 
that you all. Wow, look, that first serve really wasn't all that quick. It was into the body of Tanner Sagan. Just 101 miles an hour. She's been serving a lot bigger than that, so good change up there from Huber. This time it's Marina Arakovic waiting to receive. Turn from Thomas again. Yes. Still swinging away in this latest service game. Love. Ladies and gentlemen, security players, please be quiet on the balcony. Thank you. Forty love. on the line once again Arakovic and Tanis are gone just ahead well you can't do it any better than this lob right on the line from Tanis Agan. both girls at the net Raymond and Huber and as soon as it went up you know the the body language of Lisa Raymond she knows that it's beaten her She needs the bizarre banana the two need to heed the call of nature and we've had a change of line judges as well Let's 
Let's get the spotlight back on Lisa Raymond. Remember, she was the one that was match point down at 7 8 on her serve. Withstood that and the match continued. Gee, that's a big forehand. Love 15. Huge wind up on that forehand, almost knocked Liesl Huber over. for three hours this set alone an hour and a half no, that, re that shot 50, 30. possibly could have been Huber's but she stood her ground huge forehand once again from Arakovic let's just see if Huber had a play on that did a good job Arakovic to get around that serve actually looking for the weapon Miss hit off the return, wasn't it, from Rakovic, but she'll take it. Played a good point after that. This is the second match point they've had on the Raymond serve in this third set. Yeah. It's gone out. Yeah, and so yeah. have the third seats. For three hours and three minutes. Third set lasting 92 of them. And that is a big upset. Marina Arakovic and Tamarine Tamasagan seeing off the vastly experienced duo of Liesel Huber and Lisa Raymond. Great reaction there from this team, really just enjoying their moment. And thank you to the crowd and just pretty happy with each other. Not too many chances on serve either way in that third set, but that last game they just played a good game, didn't they? Arakovic, some big forehands. So after losing the first set, coming back strongly, Arakovic and Tanisagant. They will um, now play. Sabine Lazicki and Samantha Stoza, all the six seeds, Nadia Petrova and Anastasia Rodionova in the semi finals. But they will be feeling forgot the joys of an English summer because they've seen off the third seeds, Huber and Raymond, in three very long sets. A couple of minutes over three hours, four six, seven six, thirteen eleven. Well, Marina Arakovic and Tamarine Tanisagan there through to the semi-finals of the ladies' doubles in a very long match. We're going to be closing down this stream now, but you can continue watching online. For